Let's rock and roll, man. What Woo. is up? I'm fucking tired. Ready for a nap. Yeah. Like tired, you said. Yeah, tired, like sleepy, like long day at work. Would rather be sleeping right now. Oh wait, but that makes me sound like I'm disinterested in sitting here and giving you my opinion. Yeah, don't even get my started bad. with these motherfuckers. It's gonna be like you're not interested. You don't have any MMA passion anymore. You're all fucked up. Yeah, it, it, we do get tired a little bit, everybody. Yeah, because we anyway, work full time jobs. Yes, it is. It is full time. We have real jobs now. Uh, real quick, before we do our tough recap for episode five. If you guys get a chance or you haven't had a chance to run over to MMAValor.com, you probably want to go do that. Um, they have uh, two actually interesting articles. Uh, one, they had the recap of uh, Tough 17, Episode 5. And they also have an article about Tom Watson, who just had a fight recently, and his feelings the on golfer? TRT. Huh? Tom Watson, the golfer? Uh, not the golfer, my man. Uh, no Ford, no golfer, none of that shit. No. And no, but Tom Watson, um, who just recently had a fight and, uh, the articles are written by their editor and chief Joshua Wood. So go check it out. Now, uh, what do you think about tough last night, bro? I loved it. I'm glad Bubba got put in this place. And my favorite part is how at the end he's crying, talking about how he's sparred with people better than him. Then you shouldn't have lost. Because week it, one, you were talking, he, week one, he was talking cash shit about his own teammate, about how he wasn't ready. So what, I, what's your excuse? Right. You lost to a dude who's 20 years old. Yeah, it's funny because I knew you. I knew your dick was going to get hard about that guy because you just did not like him from the get. Because <laughs> he was no, talking he was cash a douche, shit. Day one. Yeah, he was. He, I mean, like I understand in that house. Eventually, it's going to come down to you know one on one. You might be fighting your own teammate, but in the beginning, you're supposed to be a team. You're supposed to back each other up. Even if you think your boy can't win the fight, you should back him up and help him out. Okay, right. if he's needy emotionally, you still have to be there because I'm going to tell you what. I don't think Gil cried after his loss. I'm pretty sure he didn't. Right. Oh yeah. You know, and it's it's funny, man, because that guy had like. Mad experience com in contrast to a lot of the fucking people. And he he's fighting a guy that had, had virtually fights. none. Huh? Right. It, that dude Bubba has 30 fights. So my yeah. thing is, is he got put, he got put into positions that I, I mean, dude, the sweeps that were going on that were fantastic. Like all the transitions. I was like, wow. The, yeah. the young kid for being 20 years old. I mean, if he, if he sticks with this and makes this his job, he's yeah. got potential to be nasty. And I'm going to tell you what, he can drop some weight. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know what's funny? The funny thing that I found that was interesting about this episode of Tough is really how they're, they're really doing a, a I mean, th that fight was, was hands down the best fight so far because it was a good fight. I mean, it went back and forth and it was a good fight, but, but besides that and besides the actual fight on, on the episode, it's like, it's amazing how they're pulling Ronda Rousey in it. They brought Mickey Rourke in. You know, they're... <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you right now. Do I know how I'm to get under your skin so, or what, motherfucker? I'm so tired of hearing her name. I know. We made a point the other day. You, we, we, we were watching the fight. George and I were watching the fight, and we are tweeting about how, many, how much Ronda Rousey and, you know, promotions they had and people were like well you got to promote the fight we know they have to promote the fight but you know when you're doing back to backs it gets to be fucking a little bit too much man dude gsp and john jones don't get that kind of promotion Fuck and i understand no. this is the f i understand this is the first time woman yada da yada da shmada da shmada da and and i think that's a great segue to what the big news that came out today are the roster cuts and from what yeah. i'm understanding from what i read is the ufc plans on cutting over 100 fighters to make room for for the incoming women right. that they're going to have to sign to try to beef up that and the um, strike force contracts they're starting to take on. And, and you know, they had to honor the contracts. And, uh, and one you, of the ca I was going to say one of the big casualties is John Fitch. And right. it, it looks like Dana's like, look, if you're not going to perform and put on an entertaining show, you're going to have to beat it. You and know, I, it's I think that's the message was sent. Yeah, it's funny. And, you know, again, if, and, and real quickly, you know, um, you know, like George said about John Fitch and some of these other news that's breaking, run over to MMA Paradise. That's MMA-Paradise.com because they have a lot of good articles actually as well about breaking news and stuff. And, uh, and actually that's where I, I picked up this one article from, but it, it's funny how many people that are getting fucking just yanked. Like, I mean, like you said, you know, we knew that it probably would happen eventually with John Fitch, not because he's not talented, but because just like we said in the Olympics, that shit gets boring to some degree. And with all this new mainstream followers of MMA coming in and, you know, into the picture and people, you know, now you're seeing women's MMA, 
People want to see fucking excitement. That's what they're paying for. When you've got a $55 pay-per-view, people don't want to see a snooze fest. I'm sorry, you know? And, that, and here's the other thing. For you for you folks who just look at it from, from you know what you want to watch, can you imagine if you went to a live event and you like, for instance, the last card we just had, the one in England, I think right. one fight, one fight on the main card didn't go the distance. And that's because the dude tore his, what, his calf? Yeah, the guy fucked can you, his calf can up. You imagine, yep. Can you imagine if you had to sit through five fights that went the distance and one of them was 25 minutes? That's, that's brutal. I mean, it's, it's especially if they're, they're not exciting back and forth fights. It's well, just, you know what? And that, that, that is what, what you're talking about, George, is one of the interesting things about what you're talking about right now is that, all those fights that went the distance, right? All those guys that were part of those fights that lost, what Are happened? Got cut. Yeah. They, Jay they Heron got cut. got cut. Jacob Voltman got cut. John Fitch got cut. I mean, the whole Che Mills got cut. Everyone mm -hmm. on that card who lost pretty much got cut. Yeah, they got cut. Basically, you know, they're, and it is going to become a thing of entertainment. I mean, you see how, how even in the tough house, like, Ch you know, Chell Sonnen, his relationship with Ronda Rousey calling her up, you know, Mickey Rourke coming. They're trying to make this mainstream. And let me tell you something. If you have, if, if you're not a performer, if you don't got a mouth like Chell Sonnen, if you're just, unfortunately, if you're the type of MMA fighter that is just a grappler and you have fucking, you have the personality of a basset hound, look for a new fucking job because you will not be in the UFC for a long fucking time. I can promise Dog, you that shit. Did you just say basset hound? I said fucking Basset Hound, like, <laughs> fucking Basset Okay, now, now let's let's cut over to some more, um, I would say, interesting news. Now, I know a lot of you, there's been a lot of changes to the 158 card. And with the way the changes are going, Kevin and I are not going to touch on it here. Because yeah. with our luck, we'll talk about the changes, and in a week, shit will change again. But y'all need to look up fucking Rory McDonald's track record with being injured compared to his performances. Because I think he's been injured on... Th he's missed three out of his last four scheduled uh, fights. Yeah, so now he's got a neck just, injury. Yeah, and so this looks like his third out of... like, Or Ain't maybe this is, counts as third. It's just... I don't know. The, they say they train too hard, and that's my whole thing. Dial that shit back. If you know you have a fight coming up, dial it back a little bit. Yeah. 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 Worry about, you know, think about if you've, if you've been training, I know you got to train intense and there's going to be somebody that's going to be rolling their eyes at us. We understand you have to train intense and shit like this, but you know what? Fucking focus on, you know, not getting injured and fucking instead of that fucking fucked up part in the side of your head. It, wow. I'm just and then saying. I guess. I guess the other big tidbit is Anderson Silva has gone out on record and said he can make a buck 70 easy. Yeah, yeah. He he basically told Dana White that he's well. He wants that fight with GSP, dude. It seems like that. It's and I don't know if GS if if it if it works the other way around. But he's basically said I will drop to one seventy and I can make one hundred and seventy pounds easy. So I mean, what that if you once he if if it plays out this way, if GSP defends his belt and Anderson Silva you know, defense his belt, you know, then you could look at that super fight actually materializing. Whereas before I thought there is no fucking way. Anderson Silva's like, but, yeah, I'll come to you. But there's no one. We, we don't have a next opponent for Anderson Silva lined up, right? I mean, I, I don't even know. I, I, I don't know. Everybody's yeah, waiting to see who his that, next opponent is. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I, so, I mean, with that, with that in place, well, shit, just fucking let him hang out till December and let him fight GSP in December. Yeah, that's what I say. Fuck it. You know, because the mother guys are fucking sitting around not doing shit for fucking a year. And then you yeah. know what I do if when I'm and when I'm Anderson Silva and I beat that Canucks ass, I just take my hat off and say it's been fun and I retire and walk away. And yeah, fucking roll the fuck out. And lay on the fucking nothing beaches left, in he's Brazil. He's got nothing left to prove. He really doesn't, man. Now speaking of somebody that has won to kind of have something to prove, I guess, to try to have another run in the UFC is Josh Barnett. And we talked about him a little bit, like how he's a chance. And, you know, he was obviously trying to negotiate a deal with the UFC and it fell fucking through. And now he's come out and said why this deal fell through and why you won't see him fight JDS at uh, UFC 160. And it was because of this clause. And George and I were like, okay, is it a drug-related clause or a PED clause? But what it ended up being is, is that he was irritated because he didn't receive the same clause that Eddie Alvarez received. And let me go a little bit more into this. Eddie Alvarez was, during his contract negotiations when he was leaving Bellator, was basically, uh, was basically told that he would get a $250,000 signing bonus and a portion of the pay-per-views. And Josh Barnett 
was not offered that same thing, so I guess he got pissy about it. And I could be wrong exactly how it went down, but the thing that Josh Barnett has to understand is this is Eddie Alvarez is coming from Bellator, one, which you and I well, both know. Go ahead. Well, the other thing is, I mean, I mean, yeah, Eddie Alvarez is coming from Bellator. He's right now he's, you know, undefeated, hot up and coming name. But the one thing Eddie Alvarez has for him is he doesn't have the North Koreans knocking at his door to use his fucking urine as a nuclear weapon. <laughs> Right, because that motherfucker. Dude, Josh shit. Barnett pissed clean finally the first time in eight years, and I don't know how he did it, but that dude's urine could fucking melt a building down. Oh, he can melt anything down for it. He's got straight Three Mile Island piss, Shorty. Dude, it's Superman. It's, that's worse than Kryptonite for Superman, Shorty. I mean, yeah. Josh Barnett. He's one of the. He's got to be one of the most bust, drug busted fighters for not just drugs overall. I'm talking about the constant PED performance and. and all the fucking time. It, it, it's been so reoccurring in his fucking career that at some time, you know, I mean, I, I got to side with Dana White on this. It's like, I look at that guy and that's a fucking gamble. It's like you're fucking rolling dice, man. Like you're sitting at the well, fucking and here's, But, but here's the table. other thing. If I'm Dana White, I'm going to look at my heavyweight roster right. and try to see, try to look at it and go, where does Josh Barnett right. slot in and does he make me that much better? I'm not right. saying he wouldn't make the division better, but does he make it enough better where I should give this dude a quarter of a million? No. No. Or right. he want maybe it was the pay per view points, and I'm just I, me personally at this time in his career, Barnett's not worth a quarter of a million dollars. He's he's not, and and you know, and what I was going, to, I was alluding to earlier is, is also the fact of where he's coming from. He's coming from Strike Force, which just does not have or had as much clout as Bellator. Bellator, like I said, it was it started over at MTV. It it has such a mainstream following. Just regular Joes, you know, learned about MMA through Bellator, and so now Eddie Alvarez. Not that he's a household name, but he kind of became like that. So he brings well, and, a lot more to the table than Josh Barnett, who's and an then, old and head, me, you know, and, and, and failed and 80 me, million fucking drug tests. Right, and do me this favor. We, we just talked about fighters not staying in the UFC because they're not exciting. Let right. me tell you who's not exciting to watch fight. Josh Barnett. Because he's yeah. a catch wrestler. He's a ca His mm -hmm. mic skills. And now watching him, and now I'd watch him and Chael Sonnen go face off in TNA or WWF. Right. Because they got great mic skills as long as nope. somebody can write Chael Sonnen and he can practice his lines. Now, the crazy thing with that being said, I will say this. I think, um, and a lot of people out there might disagree with me, I think that if him... You know, if, if, if Barnett and JDS did meet at 160, I think that would have been an interesting fight because it's such a contrast I, in styles. I, yeah, I'd be interested to see if he'd get inside of his hands because yeah. if, if he could get inside of his hands, he could make it interesting. But if he couldn't get inside, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think Barnett stand up. He doesn't want to stand with him. Not long. Yeah, not a lot. Yeah. Without it, you know. So, so. anyway, hey, guys. Oh, 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 oh. And the what? other big thing, the other big thing is Dana White says he's coming after the TRT abusers, which, I, I really hope. Oh, and your boy said truth. he's okay with the new test. No, no, no. He, he, no. Dana White said he's coming after him. He's coming after the TRT people because he thinks people are cheating. I'm like, in other words, he looked at Vitor Belfort and goes, "How on God's green earth did Brazil give you a pass? Because Brazil had a new fighting commission. That's the only reason Vitor passed." I mean, that shit's fucking ridiculous, dude. Well, he's got to. Yeah, he's got to. He's going to have to give some got people heads up, man. Dude, it's not fair to fucking guys like Bisbing. I mean, Chell Sonnen is his fucking, is his boy right now. And I'm going to well, tell you what, he could have some issues with Chell, has fa failed some tests. And, you know, I mean, not that we're harping on this, but it's true, you know? Yeah, it's, but we'll see. I mean, I'm just saying it'll be interesting to see how Dana White's stance changes and what kind of things he's going to put in place to try to, to curb these uh, TRT abusers. Right. Well, real quick, guys, let us know your thoughts on everything. Let us know who you think will be the first person to get busted for TRT under these new rules and with Dana having a like vendetta after going after these people. Also, like I said, if you haven't had a chance, go over to MMA-Paradise.com and check out their stuff. They have some very interesting articles. We are fucking out of here.